African Regional Caucus of the Pan-African Parliament held a meeting this weekend to discuss issues facing the region. High on its agenda was the Mozambique struggle with terrorism and the region's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. To tell us more about the resolutions taken, we're joined by Puparai Togaripi, Zimbabwean MP at the Pan-African Parliament, joining us now live. Sir, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you all for having me. Let's just start off with the declaration on Mozambique. SADC and the AU have also condemned terrorism. But what kind of support can be offered to Mozambique by the region and the continent? And in particular, what sort of contribution can the Pan-African Parliament offer? Thank you very much. Um, terrorism is not um, a good phenomenon in, the, in Africa. It will be unfortunate for us to have uh, terrorism taking root. Um, as Pan-African Parliament, we represent the people of Africa, and um, we came together as the regional caucus, and we discussed terrorism in Mozambique. Um, we feel the people of Africa, especially the region, and also the whole world, to come forward immediately to help the government of Mozambique fight uh, terrorism. Terrorism is not only in Mozambique. Once it is in Mozambique, it's going to be in the next country anytime. Who knew in this part of the world that Mozambique will be facing this heinous environment? So we feel as representatives of people of Africa, mm. it's time that we quickly go into Mozambique is what we have already seen from the leaders of SADC um, getting into Mozambique, talking to the authorities there to find solutions to this sketch. So it is critical that um, uh, all member states in Africa, all member states in the world come together and assist Mozambique as agent as possible so when you say get into mozambique who are you talking about is it is it pan-african parliament members are there other people that you're referring to who who needs to get into mozambique as urgently as possible getting into mozambique is in many folds if i were to say us as people of africa as members of parliament we need to inform our uh, the people that we represent throughout africa about the challenges that are in mozambique today so people must be aware the information must be shared and to, as representatives of the people we need to get in understand what is happening in mozambique and we got a good from mozambique and we really feel it's important that information this information is spread throughout the world throughout africa so that we stop terrorism in mozambique yeah. but we also urge the world because if we talk of sadak they've already got in they've already discussed with the mozambican authorities on how they can find solutions to the challenges in mozambique mm -hmm. caused by this terrorist uh, these terrorist attacks we also urge the world those who have the capacity the united nations itself to come forward immediately because the every day that we delay to give support to mozambique we are allowing terrorism to take root in mozambique and africa at large so it is critical that everyone including civil society everyone should quickly using their own ways of dealing with such environments come forward to assist the people of mozambique fight this terrorist um, uh, attack that is happening in Mozambique. We need everybody to come in now, not any other time. I see that you commended the leadership of SADC on the matter, and we understand that the extraordinary summit of the Southern African Development Community organs on politics, defense, and security that was scheduled for the 29th of April in Maputo was moved to a later date. What sense are you getting sir uh, with regards to the matter of urgency is there enough urgency on this matter 
Yes, there is. Um, they went there, they discussed. I mean, these are security issues. You, 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 you don't read much in the postponement because as far as we know from countries that we represent, effort is being done, uh, support is being done. Did we lose? All right. Uh, I think we lost uh, Puparai Togaripi, a Zimbabwean MP at the Pan-African Parliament. Can we get him back? Is it possible? All right. You know what? Can we take a break in the meantime? Uh, all right. Sorry. I was just talking to my director, uh, Eugene. So, all right. We'll take a quick break. We'll try to get uh, Puparai Togaripi, uh, the uh, Zimbabwean MP at the Pan-African Parliament. Look. Uh, oh, I understand that he's back. All right, let's let's bring him back into the uh, conversation. Uh, so, sorry about that. I think we just had a, a bit of break in uh, the transmission. You were talking about the, the, the sense of urgency in getting things done in Mozambique. We see a sense of urgency. Um, member countries in SADC have already done a lot in in our view, they've already engaged the government of Mozambique. They have had their ministers in Mozambique to discuss this issue. And I think this is a security issue that cannot be discussed publicly. I think in our view from countries that we come from, there is effort to assist Mozambique in as much as SADC can do. But we still believe the world itself, the United Nations, should come forward with the expertise they have, the civil society, everybody must yeah. come in and assist Mozambique. I, I just want to move on to the region's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. I was listening to uh, Dr. John Nkenga Song, the uh, director at Africa CDC yesterday, giving us an update with regards to what's happening on the continent. And he was saying, uh, in terms of the period between the 15th of February 2020 and the 7th of May, over 4.6 million cases have been reported, COVID-19, 4.1 million recoveries. There's about 123,000 fatalities. What was interesting, and if I can just get to that slide where he talks about the, the variants uh, that he, he noticed, with regards to the B1617 variant, first identified, you'll remember, sir, in India. It's been detected in Angola, Kenya, Morocco, Uganda. Now we're learning here in South Africa as well. What's, what do you make of the continent's response uh, to COVID-19? Given our capacity as Africa, I think we've done very well because there were notions thrown around that, um, that we were going to see bigger disasters caused by COVID than any other part of the world. I think the people of Africa they have responded very well. Our governments have put measures that have assisted to mitigate this disease. Yes, we are now facing different variants. That's what happens with the uh, virus. They mutate and change very fast. But we think there are a lot of things that can be done in our view. We, as as Pan-African Parliament is the regional caucus, we looked at that and asked whether it is not time that African countries can also come up with their own research mm. that will bring about vaccinations, medication, even to the extent of our own traditional medicine and so forth, so that we fight this scourge. We also call upon the entire world to come up with measures to assist Africa because if we look at what we saw in, in India, mm. definitely it's, it's not a, a good state. If it comes to Africa and we are faced with it, we may then find a disaster happening. But in terms of response, in terms of mitigation, I think the governments of Africa have done tremendous well, tremendously well if you compare with the rest of the world. And we just hope we find a way to stop 
the, 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 the spread of these new variants, yeah. which we don't know uh, what behavior they will take when they come into Africa. It, so we, yeah. our prayer is if we can find solutions, if we can find support from throughout the world, we can find more uh, uh, vaccinations coming to Africa to uh, support what our governments are already doing. This will def definitely help us a lot to fight COVID-19 in its various uh, variants. So in order to scale up vaccine research, scale up vaccine development, scale up vaccine manufacturing uh, on the continent, what needs to happen in order for this to happen at a pace that will make a major impact in terms of lives and livelihoods. What, what needs to happen? What sort of environment needs to be created for this to be achieved? The first thing is the research from our own uh, scientists as Africans. We need that as a matter of agency. We need support from donors, from uh, financial institutions to to support research that is going on in Africa. We also want to collaborate. Those who are manufacturing um, uh, vaccines at the moment throughout the world, they should come and uh, transfer that expertise in Africa. Mm -hmm. We have competent people. Let them come and do it with us so that we can also one appreciate with the, the, the behavior of this disease. We need a lot of education, more information. We need collaboration with with um, everyone in the world who is find, looking for a way to fight COVID-19. So we need a, a timeless approach because nobody knows when this disease is going to let go. It may remain with us. It may be a new way of life forever, but we need proper information, proper research. We need resources to fight this disease. So. We, we, we really need everybody. We need to collaborate with everybody. This is needed like yesterday because we are poor of, of all other continents. But we, we think we still have a lot of other capacities that can be taken advantage of by the world to fight this disease. Yeah, no doubt time is of the essence. Pupurai Togaripi, Zimbabwean MP at the Pan-African Parliament. We thank you very much indeed, sir, for your time. Be well. All right, uh, there you go. Uh, let's